Hello everybody, my name is Robin and it's Martin Watch House and welcome back to GA4 BigQuery series and today we're gonna clean the mess a bit up. So what we did last two times is we learned how to work with the table suffixes and learn how to nest stuff and if you haven't seen that you should go there and look at this because it's a pretty complicated topic. But after you did that what you end up with is a event parameter level table which means, the, for example, is that my only event first visit for this specific session that I'm looking at, which has this specific time step, I have five different rows that actually explain what happened inside, inside it. And one of the things that happened there is J session ID. And if I'm not mistaken, J session ID is going to be a key for every program that happened inside my GA4. So what I want to do first of all is I wanted to apply this GA session ID for each and single row. So I can later on group by it because I mean it just make perfect sense. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna write a window definition function. So I'm gonna say max uh, case when and then uh, I also gonna rename so our new unnesting is called new event params. It's a bit too long so I'm gonna say just uh, let's say params uh, let's say, yeah, just params it should work. So what I'm going to do is case when params dot key equals GA session ID. So whenever we see this key, uh, then we return the corresponding value integer value, which is again params dot value integer value. If it's not this key, then just return null, and because null is what is like definitely less than some value, maximum is gonna perfectly handle this. And then I say and, but if I just write it this way, I need to make a group by aggregation. The beauty of the window definition function that it happens even after the group by, and I don't necessarily have to group by anything. So I'm gonna say over partition by, and then I'm gonna say event timestamp, and user pseudo ID. I, I, I think it might even be overkill, so you might even just need um, event timestamp, but just, just for the simplicity, I'm gonna do this. And they as J session ID. You need to be careful because, of course, I'm working on the new data, I'm working on the new data set and a very small one, so you might need to have a, just a bit more looking to data and make, make sure that your partition is actually by everything that you need to partition by. So uh, I have fixed the mistake because I forgot that I didn't re rename the first part. So what happened here is now, though it still have five rows here for first visit, you see, and it all happened at the same timestamp, each, each event here have the GA session ID. And now I can aggregate by it pretty much easily because I don't necessarily um, need anything else. So let's make some other cleanup before we continue doing this. Let's add a date because event date is just not going to be sufficient enough for us. So let's do parse date uh, from year, month, day from this field, which is going to be event date and say as event date. And of course we need to exclude that part from here because we don't need it anymore. For those that don't know, when you exclude it from select, you don't show it on the screen as a result, but it's still there, so you still can work with this. So you, I can say something, parse date from that field, display me the result, but I don't necessarily have to show it as a final thing. Okay, now it's much better. Now I have event date as a proper date. And the second thing I want to solve is event timestamp because it's going to be difficult to work with the timestamp since, I mean, we don't really understand things in milliseconds. So um, I don't remember the function, so let's just go and Google it. Uh, BigQuery timestamp from Micros. It's actually, um, it's actually a very cool thing that for BigQuery you can actually have everything, like everything uh, in a help. 
it's hard it's so hard to find something that is missing there so sorry is it this this is the right one so what i'm going to say timestamp micros and then just take event timestamp and say as event ts and again i'm going to remove event timestamp from my select because i don't need that value anymore Now we're talking. So I have the exact value in milliseconds for each event had happened on my website. And it's in the, per, in, the, in, the, in the way that I can actually read it as a human being. So let's look at the data and think what else we can, uh, we just want to get rid of. So I would probably get rid of all user properties just because I don't have it on my website. You might have it in, on your website. And if you have them and you don't mind showing it to everybody else, just send me your data set and I will make some videos about it. Um, I also don't have any app connected to my GA, but if you do have you again, what you need to do is just, you need to say left join unnest app info if it's an array. And if it's not an array, for example, like a traffic source, you see it also has a dot in it, but it's not an array. So you can just simply access it. In that case, you don't actually need to um, unnested. So in app info, I guess it should be just values. What else we have event dimensions. I don't have them in my specific setup. So I'm going to get rid of them. Uh, and also e-commerce doesn't exist. I guess a lot of you are going to have e-commerce. Uh, I hope it's not a nested thing, but it might be items. Yeah should be perfect. Let's run it again. So while it's running, I will just remind you that we have now date and timestamp of event. We have the parameters of event and we have a GA session ID existing on every single line. So we don't need to care about this anymore. And we also have some events happening uh, excluded. So we have a nice and clean table and it might look a bit like almost done, but the most most important thing is coming. So what you need to do after this part is you actually need to do a lot of manual work. So you need to check which keys you need to look at and create them as a separate columns. And after that, you will be able to aggregate that. And this is what we're going to do in the next video. So um, stay tuned, subscribe to this channel, push like, uh, leave your comments. If you have any questions, just drop them in the comments. If it's a uh, privacy security or something that you're not able to share with everybody, drop it on LinkedIn. I usually answer there as soon as I can. And thank you for watching. In next video, we're going even further.